Oh, hey there. Yeah, welcome to Too Long It Didn't Read Finance Edition, where I'll be talking about some personal finance and trading with a little bit of a TLDR version up front. So stick around, like, subscribe, comment, and here we go. All right, hello and welcome back. As I said, we were going to do a separate um, weekly update on just the SPX positions. Um, again, I set up a separate account. I have wanted for a long time to get these out of the main trading account because it just creates a lot of wild swings in the balances um, and obviously the risk parameters. And if I'm trying to ultimately, and, and maybe I don't, maybe I do, but I mean, I'm two, three, four years in now, I'd like to have a track record that I might be able to um, hold out as uh, at least another option for income generation and that in the future um, to investors. And if I've got wild swings of equity uh, or an increase in volatility or risk um, because of these SPXs, um, that's that's not ideal. So I've set up a separate account. It's finally funded. The funds are clear and ready to use moving forward. So there will still be more um, single or long option plays. They will just be in that account instead of this one. But as you can see, I did have a couple of SPX trades last week. I did uh, two separate losers, of course, on Monday the 11th. I had a winner on the Tuesday the 12th um, of about... 330 bucks, um, and then I had a um, got in, so a bit of a small loser on Thursday, um, followed by a pretty big winner um, after that, just because I got in at the wrong time, and uh, we'll go through those here in a little bit more detail. So uh, bear with me here. I'm gonna turn that off. Turn off the webcam. All right, so you can see the charts here. So. Um, what I want to do is just walk you through them. So we've got the um, chart set up here. I've got four of them because this is how I look at it and this is what I do. Um, the reason I've got four is they're different time frames. You got five minute, you got 15 minute, you got 30 minute, and then an hour long. So these are what I use for day trading um, on the options. Again, I'm using Thinkorswim um, trading platform for all of this. So. Um, and then the other big things are um, momentum is, I don't use it all that much, but it does help every now and again. So I'll let you know when I'm looking at it, um, or for the most part, it's just there um, because, but the big one is this top one, TTM Squeeze. So it's built off of Bollinger Bands, um, and some Keltner channels. Um, and a squeeze happens when these little circles, dots, are red. That means it's kind of being forced like a spring and it's not sure what's going to happen next, but it uh, ultimately afterwards it should pop one way or another. So, um, and then the bars, of course, if they're this turquoise color, that means um, volume or momentum is increasing in that direction. Um, if they're the dark blue, um, so in this case, this the sequin cyan turquoise um, means it's uh, should the price should continue upwards volume is continuing up the dark blue means it should be slowing momentum potentially for turning around and coming down um, red is increasing to the downside yellow is slowing to the downside potentially to turn around and come back up so that's the basics on this so I'm usually trading put options, so I'm expecting the particular stock, SPX, to go down in price so that I can make some money off it. So uh, Monday the 11th, uh, I had a couple of false breakouts and really kind of didn't follow my usual plan. So overnight, we had a big drop off on Friday. We got up to a high of 38.26. Um, overnight, this gap happened in the futures market, and so it dropped way down. I normally like to wait at least 30 minutes, let all this craziness get itself out of its system of the overnight trades, the weekend, the people that want to try to make a quick buck in the morning. So things kind of calm down a little bit more before I trade. I was so excited, of course, um, that I couldn't wait. So I got in right at the open. Uh, I think it was 8.35. So four or five minutes after the open, um, I put a trade I got in to go short here. And I was up maybe 100, 150 bucks um, as we got down to the tail. And then, of course, as you see, it just returned all the way back up. So when I place these trades, I like to place them as a set and forget so I can go about my day. So I put in the um, initial order to buy along with, uh, well, maybe not at the same time, but I get in the order to buy, um, whether it's all at the same time as a first cancels or first triggers an OCO or in one cancels other, 
or I just go buy it and then I set up the one cancels other order later to get me out for a profit or a loss. So in this case, um, I usually like to shoot for about five, 600 bucks on the upside um, and put my stop loss um, somewhere right around here is probably where I did um, about 200, $250, depending upon how far I think it might fall. So in this case, I kind of was thinking it was going to fall down to this level because of this part over here um, or further. So um, that could have been 20 point move. I mean, that could have been a eh, thousand dollars or more, um, probably more than that, actually. So I wasn't expecting the whole thing. I'm trying not to be greedy. Um, so 500 bucks on a win first thing Monday morning would have been great. Um, obviously, that did not happen. And of course, even worse, I uh, thought I was right still. Um, so on this next down bar, I thought I just got in early, got in again, um, and again was profitable for 50, 100 bucks. And of course, as you see, it just turned around and knocked me out again. So strike two, I don't believe in the strike three rule. So I was done for the day. Um, and really because I set a price target here, a price alert to just message me if we ever got down to this price again. And I don't think we did. Stop. There we go. Yeah, so pretty much held that line the rest of the day. Um, so we'll move on to the 12th. And these these prices here, these charts should all be linked up with my crosshair. So you should see them moving on the same bar. It should light up here. So, um, so we'll move on to the 12th. Get all my stuff lined up here. So on the 12th, I was a little smarter. I waited until after the first 30 minutes. So check mark there. Um, we got we had a price alert I set for right here, right as the kind of the open um, lows. And or excuse me, I even used the the tail weight on here. So I got weight on here, and I said, okay, great. If that is um, where the open stopped and held. Great, so if we break that, we should go a little further. Um, and if not, then we just don't trade for the day. So I set a price alert, um, right click, for example, create alert, and I just change the price, say at, or, well, that should change to below on its own, but a below, I hit create, creates a nice little line. So if that line's broken, it texts me. And then I know I can come back to my thing if I'm not already staring at it and get in. So this little circle here is where I noted the second trade, or the trade of the day took place. So it broke down through here, 11.05 on this big red candle. Um, I got in just after it broke through, so somewhere around here, uh, and then held for a quick couple dollars. Um, I set it initially at 500 for profit. Um, I thought it was a little too far um, to go all the way down here, but as volatility spiked, um, the price actually spiked, so I hit would have hit my 15 probably around here, um, and it got as high as I believe about $20 down there. So could have made a thousand, um, but again, I don't like to try to be greedy. Um, but I did modify my order instead of five to 500 in profit. I just took, uh, I believe, as we saw earlier, about 330 bucks in profit uh, and got out because again, that was a big big bar, quick move, five minutes. Um, definitely much more comfortable with that trade because it broke the low of the day, it broke my price. Um, and more importantly, we're going to use our TTM, this colorful bar here. Um, green means it's not unsure. And the red bars are increasing. So that's downward momentum. So that's good here. And it just repeats on the other time frames as well. Again, I'm using multiple time frames because they do tell a bigger story. So if we go over here. We've got our down move, same down move as you see with the crosshairs on this bottom left chart. And we've got a little bit of uncertainty but it's after some big bars. Now, again, that's only one, one of the time frames. Let's come over here. We've got some red uncertainty as well. So uncertainty, but it's got downside momentum with it because of all these red bars before, right? So it's uncertain. Probability is saying that it's probably gonna continue down for a little bit. And again, the five minute chart is telling me this. A little unsure on the 15 and 30 minute and the 
um, hour long was uncertain as well but again red bars increasing downward momentum for it so felt confident with it um, again I set the trade so that I either won 500 or I lost 200 um, so not real concerned and then I walked away um, and started I think I was reading actually on the couch got a text message that my order to fill for profit was done and uh, made a nice trade there for it um, yeah moving on to the big trades so is this the 14th yeah okay so on the 14th Thursday I had a trade here except I don't want this because it's messing up the view here there we go um, so I kind of messed up a little bit um, I didn't set the low of the day so we opened on this dotted line here and I set the low price alert here where we opened at um, not ideal but it did break I got in got knocked out of course as you can see because um, it didn't go lower it did go actually and I think I was up 150 200 bucks on this little low test here as it hit the 200 moving average which is what this uh, turquoise line is going across pretty common stumbling point um, also but it smacked right into the close of the previous day which is some more resistance so just really a little too much not in my favor um, to go short here but if I was quicker at it it's not really how I trade but I could have sniped a quick hundred dollars um, and done it but instead it turned around immediately knocked me out for about 200 250 in a loss and uh, pretty upset but it happens but I reset I set the okay if that hit once maybe it'll retest it later in the day so I reset my price target for this line here at 3809 and sure enough later in the day about two o'clock um, it broke through I got in and it went down uh, quite nicely um, with the five minute you got the it's sure it's got the green lines or green dots instead of the red um, red lines for accelerating downward momentum uh, and I think we even had similar ones on yeah so up here on the 30 we finally turned green in the last minute we had some acceleration on the downward move on the 15 minute same thing and on the hour I think we were pretty close to yeah because those bars are just a little bigger but um, as you can see on the top left here we've got the bar would have been this little oval here so downward blue so blue is technically that's coming off the high that's the only reason it's not red still but it's blue instead of turquoise so it's decreasing this downward slope here um, all good news again it broke through the low uh, or the close of yesterday bear sign as well so a lot of things in my favor got out for a nice um, trade actually had two contracts on this so I think it was about eight hundred dollars in profit so turned my three four hundred dollar loser of the day earlier into a bigger win and ultimately helping me get back to positive for the year on SPX I think I'm only down about 700 bucks now instead of I think 1500 to start uh, with some bad trades earlier um, of course had I held which I wouldn't have there's no way to know that this was gonna happen or that is it really in my plan for it um, one I think I got out at about 13 1250 because I got the two contracts so I wanted less of a profit target um, but originally I would have set it about 15 or so because um, I got in for about seven or eight um, so I wanted to almost double uh, on a single trade and this actually went on to hit about 20 I think 20 a contract um, at the low here but um, which was actually near if we look way over here oh I don't want that so um good lord all right so the 14th so we hit this line this 3800 and it's a pretty common line all the way across here right so um should have expected it was going to go that far but again with volatility um increasing the prices and that of it it's not the easiest thing to figure out a price target on an option um, but more than happy with that trade very happy with how everything lined up all the different time frames all said bearish the price action said bearish all the right this is constantly coming down coming down coming down lower lows lower highs um, following the trend lines here breaking through the 200 um, so just a lot of positive bearish 
sentiment, which is all stacked in my favor. So I did the two. Again, sitting on the couch reading and uh, very happy to see that um, uh, alert come over on my phone. Lastly, the one I didn't take, which I'm pretty mad about because I wanted to crawl back into bed, but I got up Friday morning to finish closing out the Citibank um, earnings and noticed the SPX, noticed that we had opened below um, and really should have set, or did set actually a price target because um, the alert went off on my phone when I woke up an hour later. Um, and so should have gotten in right about here for a quick win, five, 600 bucks, um, very easy. I mean, everything was lined up. We got the green dots, meaning it's pretty sure of itself, increasing momentum to the downside with the red bars. Um, up here on our 30 minute, we got the same red bars, green dots. Over on the 15, red bars, green dots. And on the one hour, red bars, green dots. So um, all, again, bearish, just like the trade Thursday afternoon, um, all in our favor. So really, yes, I didn't take it because I wanted to crawl back in bed. It's not ideal, uh, but it happens. I'm human. Um, I was tired. I wanted to sleep sleep in a little bit longer, um, and of course that cost me five six hundred bucks. Um, so not ideal, but we'll uh, we'll work on that and uh, just you know get to sleep a little earlier so that I'm uh, I'm refreshed and ready to go. But uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, we don't need that one. Let's turn on the camera back again. Um, uh, absolute pleasure. Uh, appreciate love sharing this kind of stuff. As you can tell, I'm sure, cause I'm sure this is a 20 something minute video. Uh, and I just did a 20 minute video on the review of the other stuff. Um, but this is what I love trading. Um, it, it really teaches you a lot about yourself, what your goals are, what your passions are, um, your mental state, you know, are you the gambling type? Can you be patient? Are you disciplined? Can you sit? Can you follow the rules? Um, I've learned a ton about myself in the last four or five years trading um, with with my decision making, with my discipline, with my patience, um, with sitting on my hands and whether or not I just need to, um, I've created trading strategies that don't make any real money or cost any money, but it just allows me to do something because I get antsy and I want to do something. And if I don't do a small $4 trade on SPX or SPY uh, with a spread that's you know 99% in my favor, so, it's not going to do much. It's not going to make much, but I got to hear the dings go off. I got to hear the, the trade placed. Um, it just, it helped with me not doing something much worse, like a trade on SPX where I could have lost four or 500 bucks. So, um, I absolutely love it. I hope you do too. Like comment, subscribe. Let me know if you like it, if you hate it, um, what you'd like to learn more. Um, and maybe I missed a couple of terms there that you'd like to learn more about. Happy to share. Thanks again.